Hello and welcome to the video. I have just recently upgraded from the A6300 to the A7 III and I thought it would be interesting to do a quick comparison video. I'm going to be comparing the menu systems, the 4K video quality, the 1080p video quality, 120 frames, the autofocus, the internal microphones, photo quality, rolling shutter, low light ISO, battery life, the in-body stabilization and the price. I'm going to be using the Sony 28mm f2 on the a7 III and on the a6300 I'll be using the Sony 18-105 f4. Now I'll be shooting them both at f4 and I will be using the 18-105 at about 90mm which with the crop factor gives it about 28.5mm so as close as I can get. My, my initial plan was to shoot both cameras on picture profile 1 and not do any grading but unfortunately I had already in the past been into picture profile 1 on the ACC 300 and messed with it and changed it to Cine 2. I didn't realise that at the time and I couldn't tell from the back of the screen because it was a bright day. So I have actually had to grade the A6300 footage to look like the A7 III footage, which is annoying, but it is what it is. First is the menus. Both of them are bad, but I will say that I really like the level of customization that you can do with these cameras. Almost every little detail can be customized. Next is 4K video. Both do look good. Uh, annoyingly, the A6300 missed focus, so it does look blurrier in this. Next, 1080p video. Both do look quite bad, but it's a definite improvement for me on the a7 III. 120 frames per second. Again, the a7 III just looks better. Next, testing the internal microphone and the autofocus. Okay, so this one should be the onboard microphone test and the autofocus test. Okay, so this one should be the onboard microphone test and the autofocus test. I would say it's very close on the internal mic. It's maybe just a little bit better on the a7 III. For the autofocus, the a6300 just doesn't do a very good job. It hunts for me at the start and then just doesn't focus on me after then. The a7 III is definitely better on this test. Now comparing photos, now both cameras are 24 megapixels and all the photos are shot in RAW. I can't really tell much difference between the photos to be honest, apart from the depth of field is better on the a7 III, which you would expect. Next is rolling shutter, now they're both shot in 4K. The a6300 has definitely got more rolling shutter, but they are both bad. Next is the low light ISO test. They're both shooting in 4K and at this point I had been in and changed the picture profile one so that it matches on both of them. The A7 III was always going to do better in this test, but I am actually quite impressed with the A6300. It gets to ISO 6400 before it starts to fall apart in my opinion. Battery life. The A6300 batteries only last about an hour, whereas the A7 III lasts all day shooting for me. The A6300 batteries are a lot cheaper though because the third party ones are available. You can get two batteries for a third of the price that you can get one A7 III battery for. I assume that will change shortly when third parties bring out more batteries for the A7 III. In-body stabilization. Obviously the A6300 doesn't have in-body stabilization so this is really a test to see how well it works on the A7 III and actually it doesn't look that great. Lastly is price. The A7 III body alone is £2,000. The A6300 body alone on the Sony website retails for £1,000. But reality is you can get it on Amazon for about £800. So my overall opinion on these two cameras 
I'd say it's really impressive the extra features that you get if you spend that extra thousand pounds on the A7 III. But then also at the same time, it's really impressive how many features you get on the A6300 for the price that it is. Both of them are great cameras. So that's it for this. I hope it was helpful in some way and uh, thank you very much for watching. I will hopefully see you in the next one.